We, um, this session we're going to look at the recreational diet planner all right, and um, pretty much everything we need to know about how it all came about, um, how it was developed, rules and regulations of the RDP um, and such things to get us ready for our exams. So, there was a guy called John Scott Haldane. Right. And the uh, British Navy employed him to investigate decompression sickness. All right. um, he is credited with uh, most models of computer algorithms and the dive table. So in our computers we've got different algorithms all right. um, and most of them probably on his models. Um, he based his findings on seven concepts, which we're going to have a look at now. All right, the first one is that nitrogen dissolves from air into tissue upon descent as pressure increases. So as we're diving, we're going to become under pressure. All right, and nitrogen um, dissolves from the air into our body tissues as we go under pressure or descent. Our body continues to absorb until a state of saturation. So in physics, we've had a look at supersaturation and saturation. All right. So here we are seeing that our body continues to absorb until a state of saturation. So at the moment, at the surface, we are saturated with nitrogen. If we go diving underwater, we absorb more. And if we stay there for long enough, there comes a point where we are saturated. You may have heard the term saturation divers. So that's something in commercial diving, right? Where they stay down there for such a long time, again, that they, their body at that depth, at that pressure, their body doesn't absorb anymore, right? And obviously it takes them a very long time to come back up. The third thing you looked at is that upon descent, as we come back up, the nitrogen dissolves out of the tissue and is exhaled. So as we're coming back up, as soon as we start, okay, we come into a point of supersaturation, right? And we are expelling that nitrogen that our body has absorbed. The difference between the dissolved nitrogen pressure and the surrounding pressure when ascending or descending is called a pressure gradient. Right, and throughout the next few slides, you'll hear me talk about pressure gradient or the gradient a little bit. Right? But basically, it's the difference between how much nitrogen is in my body at that pressure and the surrounding pressure, whether I'm here at the surface or underneath the water. On the ascent, the tissue can tolerate some gradient of high pressure without decompression sickness occurring. The nitrogen in solution dissolves harmlessly out of the issue. Out of the tissue. So thinking about this is that as I'm coming back up, obviously I have more nitrogen in my body than I would when I'm at the surface, all right? And my body can handle some of that pressure gradient, all right? Um, without without causing decompression sickness. If the gradient exceeds acceptable limit of dissolved gas and it comes out of solution faster than the body can eliminate it through the circulation and and respiration that may cause decompression sickness. So if that pressure gradient changes too quickly, all right, our body cannot um, get rid of that nitrogen slowly or fast enough all right, through circulation and respiration, all right, that can cause the onset of decompression sickness. The seventh thing we found was that decompression sickness can be avoided by keeping the pressure gradient within acceptable limits. How? Calculating the theoretical pressure of nitrogen dissolved into the body and then control the ascent so that the pressure gradient between theoretical pressure and surrounding pressure doesn't exceed critical limits. If the gradient is too great, decompression stop is needed in order to avoid decompression sickness. All right, so if that gradient becomes too big, it's going to be surfacing all the way straight up to the surface, we would have to stop. Right. Obviously, in recreational diving, there is no decompression diving. Alright, there's a bunch of different compartments. Alright, let's have a look at them. 
the different parts of the body absorbs and releases nitrogen at different rates. Originally, the US Navy table used five compartments, then six, and now 14. All right. Um, <laughs> looking at our picture here, our body has different tissues. All right. So, for example, bone versus muscle versus skin versus blood. All right. And they all absorb or dissolve nitrogen at a different rate. Half times is another bit of terminology we're going to look at, all right, and <clears throat> you'll find that um, referred to, is the time in minutes for a compartment to fill halfway. All right. So if I have a compartment, a tissue compartment, all right, and it has a five minute half time, that means in five minutes it is half full. Okay. And what happens then is that at six half times, the compartment is to be considered full. Because in the next five minutes, it fills half again. All right? In the next five minutes, it fills another half. Next five minutes, more. And eventually, after six half times, it's 98.4% full. That's pretty much full enough for what we're dealing with. All right? So at six half times, the compartment is considered full. Today's models use three minutes and up to 600 minute um, half times compartments depending on what model they're used. Okay. Um, compartments will, with short half times are fast tissues and compartments with long half times are slow tissues. So it all depends on how fast or slow our compartments absorb nitrogen. Different models work out differently, okay? On today's computers, you can actually, in some computers, you can change the algorithms depending on whether or not you're, for example, diving um, in uh, Vanuatu or the President Coolidge where you're gonna do two deep dives in one day and that's all you're gonna do, all right? Or whether or not you're gonna dive here on the Great Barrier Reef, all right? and you're gonna do four or five relatively shallow dives in one day, all right? Different algorithms will work out different ways of giving you the best dive times or giving you the best amount of surface interval between. M values. M values is maximum tissue pressure allowed in a compartment when the diver surfaces to prevent exceeding the maximum acceptable gradient. That sounds all very confusing, but I'm just pick it through. The maximum tissue pressure, the maximum allowed of nitrogen in there, when the diver comes back up, exceeding acceptable gradient. So the maximum amount of nitrogen in that compartment, when I come back at the surface and everything is still okay. That's what that means. Alright, that's the M value. If you exceed the M value, you might succumb to decompression sickness. Right. Fast compartments have a high M value, and guess what? Slow compartments have a low M value. All right. Oops, sorry, just go back one again. Put my picture of my goats. All right. um, look, some of the testing was actually done on goats All right. to see um, what um, nitrogen absorption was. Tested on, uh, was tested on dives and dived out. Uh, so, no, pictures a little bit in the wrong place, obviously. Um, and yeah, some of the testing was done on coats. Okay. Um, Doppler ultrasound detects very small, silent bubbles that don't cause decompression sickness. And that is something we're going to talk about in a second when the ultrasound machines, the Doppler ultrasound machines, came into play, right? And how that had an impact on today's recreational dives and flights. Sorry? 1980. 1980? Yes, yes, yes. Alright. Let's have a look at some of the terminology. Um, really important to, to, to know these, especially at our level. All right. Bottom time is the time from start of descent to the start of ascent 
excluding the amount of time it takes me to get to the surface and excluding safety stops. Alright, so bottom time is from the time I go down, do my dive, I start my ascent. That is what we consider bottom time. The time it takes us to come back up or the safety stop is not um, a part of that. Multi-level dive is a dive that starts at a depth and then progresses to a shallower depth. So think about a step, right? You start and you dive at 30 meters, staying there for 10 minutes, ascending to 20 meters, starting there for another 10 minutes, going to 10 meters, another 10 minutes, right? That would be a multi-level dive, right? Doing different levels in the same dive. Which is pretty much what you do at the reef anyway. That's pretty much what you do in the reef anyways, that's exactly right. Having said that, if I can borrow this for a second, when we get into our dive tables in a moment, I'm allowed to go to 30 meters for a maximum time of 20 minutes. Alright? But if I go to my, that's not how I dive. I dive 30 meters, stay, stay there for 10 minutes, alright? Then ascend to 20 meters, where I'm going to be absorbing less nitrogen. Spend there another 10 minutes, then I go to 10 meters, stand there. And all of a sudden I'm doing a 30 minute dive. But according to the table, I'm only allowed to do a 20 minute dive because it considers you to be at 30 meters for the entire time of the dive. Right. NDL is no decompression limit, so the maximum amount of time allowed at depth before having to do a decompression stop. So on our table, the bottom black number, again, that is our NDL. Steve, I might just borrow this for that. Alright. So if we're looking here, black box, NDLs, no decompression limits. Maximum allowable time I'm allowed to stay there for. A pressure group, the alphabet. On our tables, we've seen the alphabet A through to Z. Alright, that is the pressure group. Alright. And what the pressure group represents is how much nitrogen is absorbed in my body. A means very little, Z means an awful lot. Right? Instead of representing and saying I have 645 units of something, nitrogen in my body, we're just saying A is very little, Z is an awful lot. A repetitive dive is a dive within six hours of a previous dive. All right? So we consider a repetitive dive, a dive within six hours of the previous. And if we have a look at our table, the absolute maximum on the surface interval table, that bottom one here, that is three to six hours. So after six hours surface interval, even if you were in pressure group Z, you would be completely back to normal. RNT is residual nitrogen time, which is the amount of nitrogen expressed in minutes for the plant's depth already in your body from a previous dive. Alright, what does that mean? In a sec, we're going to look at the tables and how that works. Alright, but on table 3, I have where the letter of the alphabet and the depth come together, a box. In each box, I have two numbers. All right? If you add those two numbers together, you actually end up with your no decompression limit. So what they've done here is they've taken the bottom number in white and called it our residual nitrogen time. Residual nitrogen time is the amount of time that is calculated for you as if you had been underwater already. So after my second dive, after my surface interval, let's say I'm in pressure group C. And I want to go back to 18 meters. So I have C amount of nitrogen in my body. And let's say I want to do a dive to 18 meters for 20 minutes. To find out how much nitrogen I have in my body after that dive, I would have to add C which I still have in my body, plus 20 minutes. Apples and oranges can't do it. But C is the equivalent of the number in the white box. 
Alright, so where C and 18 come together, the white box says 15. So, 15 is the same as C. What does that mean? It means that C is as if I would have been 15 minutes already underwater at 18 meters. Don't worry about that too much right now, because once we go into the tables, we'll, ex we'll elaborate on that a little bit more. All right, a safety stop is a stop at five meters for three minutes. So that's the terminology. Let's have a look at the US Navy. So they are the ones that we used until about the 1980s in the US Navy tables, all right? Um, there is a copy of one of them. No decompression limits and repetitive group destination tables, but no decompression air dives. All right, and these were readily available to anybody and um, fairly easy to use, so we used them. Okay. Um, what we realized, however, is that any compartment could be the controlling department. Okay, the controlling department of the surface interval to see how much nitrogen we are eliminating. The Navy used 120 minute half times compartment for surface intervals. Right. That doesn't mean much to us right now, don't get too hung up on this. It's just when we get to the RDP, you'll see what the difference is basically. Okay. What this meant was that any dive within 12 hours was a repetitive dive. Right. We've already seen that on our table, that any dive after within six hours as a repetitive dive and anything greater than six hours service until we're starting again from scratch. However, with the US Navy tables, it was 12 hours, all right? So we would have to do far greater surface intervals to be able to do the same dives on the US Navy table than what we can do today on the recreational dive plan. Okay, US Navy, back then, all right, they were male, they were tall, they were fixed, they were 20 to 30 years of age. That is not the recreational dive world today. All right, they look a bit more like this. All right, um, men, women, tall, short, fit, unfit, young and old. All right, so remembering that elimination of nitrogen has to do with your circulatory system. All right, um, if we're all men, and all 25, and all 6 foot, and all really fit, well, very, very similar. But today, us, that's probably a better representation of the divers that are doing recreational diving. So, with that in mind, there was a Dr. Raymond Rogers. And he came in about 1980, and he realized that a 120 minute half time for calculating washout when deco diving is overly conservative for no deco diving. So remembering that the US Navy, when they were diving, they had a task to do. And they were down there for as long as it took the task. All right? So they quite regularly went into deco and had to do certain deco stops. That's not, again, recreational diving. Recreational diving is no decompression diving. So that 120 minute half time Right? That 12 hour surface interval to eliminate all the nitrogen is probably overly conservative. All right. As we already discussed, the test groups of the US Navy was not the recreational diver of today. And we talked about the Doppler ultrasound flow meter was developed. All right. We heard about that. That is measuring silent bubbles. All right. and that is showing how much nitrogen we have in our body a bit more accurate. If we're looking at the recreational dive planner, the surface interval credit can be less conservative when limiting to no decompression diving. A 60 minute half time compartment is used as analysis showed that the 120 minute half time was overly conservative for no deco diving. Right. So again, what does it allow us to do? It allows us to have shorter breaks between the dives than what the US Navy table did. The residual nitrogen time is roughly cut in half compared to US Navy tables offering shirts, shorter surface intervals between the dives. So that residual nitrogen time 
on table three. All right. What we have here in the box, the white one at the top, tells us how many minutes is C amount of nitrogen. All right. That is actually shorter than what it was on the US Navy tables. The recreational dive planner has 14 compartments and 5 minutes to 480 minute half times. Now, what's important for you guys to remember is the difference between the US Navy table and the recreational dive planner is that the recreational dive planner, we're using 14 compartments and what that does is, oh, one of the other benefits is that our surface intervals are much shorter than what the US Navy table did. Alright? So that's what we need to remember out of this. Alright? When it comes to teaching students, alright, you're not going to go into half time tissues and how it all is developed. So what is important for you guys to know though is what is the difference? Because people will ask you. And for you to be able to understand that, well, Different data, different theory, we realize that you know the recreational diver is different than the US Navy diver. We do no decompression diving, they did decompression diving. Our service interval credit table is six hours, theirs was 12 hours, and we're using 14 compartments. Compartments slower than 60 minutes could control a repetitive dive for a small portion of no-stop dives involving long, shallow, multiple dives. What that is all about is that we have special rules on the recreational dive planner. And you may have seen these rules and they say that if I end up in pressure group W or X, regardless of what the table says I can do, I must wait a minimum of one hour as a service interval. I can do my next dive. The other one it says if they end up in Y or Z, it, require, it requires three hour minimum service interval. Now that is all about shallow, long dives. Alright? So the 60 minute could control repetitive dives for a small portion of no stop dives involving long, shallow, multiple dives. In order to end up in Z, the only way you end up there is if you either dive for 12 meters, 10 or 12 meters and stay there for 219 or 247 minutes. <laughs> All right? It's the only way to end up in pressure group Z. So that's what we're talking about here. Those very small portion of dives that are really shallow and really, really long. Okay? All right, that's what those special rules cover. The recreational dive plan has lower M values than the US Navy table and the no decompression limit for single dive on repetitive on the recreational dive plan are shorter than the US Navy table. So our maximum times that we'd like to stay there, they are shorter than what the US Navy table told. Alright? Again, because we want to do lots of dives within the day rather than going deep and only do it at a couple of points. Compartments slower than 60 minutes could control repetitive dive for small portions of the no-stop dives involving long, shallow, multiple dives. All right? As we said, WX, one hour, YZ, three hours. RDP has lower M values, no decompression limit for single dive on the RDP are shorter than the US Navy tables. It's really important is you cannot interchange pressure groups. So if you take a US Navy table and do your first dive on that and you're in pressure group F, you can't then take the recreational dive planner and go on with pressure group F there. You cannot interchange SSI tables with NAWI tables, with PADI tables. They are different algorithms and the letters represent a different value. All right? So you, once you are with one, you're going to stick with one. Okay, rules. On the back of the recreational dive planner, we see lots of rules we need to be familiar with. Let's quickly go through them. Cold water or strenuous plan the dive as if it was four meters deeper than what it actually is. Better be cold, cold water. Yeah, that's right. What do you call cold water? Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 really ambiguous, isn't it? And they don't specify. All right. 
I would consider cold water anything where there's no coconut trees. <laughs> My theory on diving, no coconut trees, too cold. All right? Cold water, look, 15 degrees probably, there is no set rule, yeah. right? but if you use my coconut rule, you're pretty <laughs> safe. Alright? Um, anywhere you have to observe the point, then you should have to wear a yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywhere you need to wear more than a shorty. Yeah. <laughs> when you're looking at gloves and booties and hoods, you yeah, know, cold water. <laughs> um, or strenuous condition. Why? Because these things have an effect on your circulatory system. Alright? Plan repetitive dives shallower. Alright. Those were the rules that were set out in the recreation dive plan. And today, a lot of people say, oh, I'm diving with a computer, it calculates it all out. To a degree you have a point, to a degree you don't have a point. The test data, when it was done, even on those models that are in your computer, was always done that the first dive is the deepest, progressively shallow. Okay, look, the truth of the matter is, if you drop half a meter or a meter deeper than your previous dive, whoop de doo. But don't plan a dive to 10 meters, followed by a dive to 30 meters. Right? That's probably what's more important to take away from this. Limit your maximum depth to experience and training. Multiple repetitive dives, we already covered this. If you end up in WRX, you've got one hour surface interval. Y and Z, three hour surface interval. Limit repetitive dives to 30 meters and shallower. And 42 meters is there for an emergency only. All right, that 42 meters on your recreational dive planner is there when you go, oops. All right, all right. Morals. If you descend to 40 meters or more, sorry, or exceed the no decompression limit by less than five minutes, ascend to five meters for eight minutes, stop and don't dive for six hours. So if you've gone over the maximum allowable time you're allowed to stay there, and say you've gone to 30 meters, you're allowed to stay there for 20 minutes, and you've gone there for between 20 and 24 minutes, ascent, five meters, eight minutes stop, all right? And do not dive for at least six hours. Where does the six hours come from? Our surface interval table. If a loading compression limit is seated by more than 5 minutes, we need to ascend to 5 meters and wait for 15 minutes, air supply permitting. Obviously, alright? Don't die for 24 hours. Okay. Safety stops. Recommended? Do a safety stop after every single dive. Alright? I still do it today. Alright? Even if I've just done a dive to 12 meters, I do a safety stop. What does that do? It keeps you under pressure. It allows your body to eliminate nitrogen. The pressure gradient is what has been. Right? It's a safety um, thing for you. You do it actually slightly differently, whether it's you take people to the shallow depth and have fun up there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. there's nothing more boring than getting <laughs> on the boring line at five minutes for three minutes, you know, unless you've got some manta swimming past or a whale shark or, you know, a minky whale. But if you're just hanging there in blue water, it's boring, all right? Whereas, yeah, finish your dive at five meters, swim around, okay? Also really good for students to get their buoyancy right at five meters, right? Towards the end of the dive, as we learned from the equipment session, our tank becomes more buoyant, all right? Being able to, to deal with that, all right? Rules, however, say that we must do a safety stop if our dive is 30 meters or deeper, or if we come within three of the no decompression limits, all right? So this gray shaded area here, anything deeper than 30 meters, all right? You see that from the no decompression limit, the previous three are shaded gray as well, and obviously the no decompression limit. So if you come that close to them, we must do a safety stop. Okay, altitude. Altitude is anything higher than 300 meters. All right, above sea level, and we should not go any higher than 3,000 meters. Okay. Again, my coconut theory applies as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. All right, not many coconuts up there. All right. Now, our ascent rate. Our ascent rate normally is 18 meters per minute. 
at altitude we halve that to 9 meters per minute. Right? Why? Again, the pressure gradient change becomes bigger. We must do a sta safety stop at the theoretical depth, no more than two dives per day. And what you should do is you should acclimatize yourself for six hours to release the nitrogen or add to pressure groups. So let's look at that. We're at sea level. We're going up to a mountain, 600 meters above sea level. I am now super saturated. I have more nitrogen in my body than the people who live on that mountain. All right? Within six hours, my body eliminates all that nitrogen and I'm the same as everybody else, and then I can go diving. If I don't want to wait for the six hours, all right, what I can do is I can add two pressure groups to my dive, and that accounts for the fact that I have nitrogen in my body already. Don't go higher, don't go to higher altitude after your first dive. Alright? So if you're doing a dive at 600 meters, don't do your second dive at 1200 meters. Dragging all your equipment up there. Okay. Those ones, except the 300 meter, they're not written down on your tables. Okay? But they are rules as well. Alright. So that concludes that. But what we're going to look at now is how we're actually going to use our tables. This triangle, this is what I call table number one. All right? Table number one, I have the alphabet on one side and the depth on the other side. Okay. It starts at 10 meters. So any dive less than 10 meters, I calculate as a 10 meter dive. All right? If my depth that I go to is not there, I go more conservative by using the next greater depth. So if I want to do a dive to 13 meters, there's 10, there's 12, there is no 13, I would use 14 meters. So depth at the top, alphabet on this side. Along the bottom here in black, I have our no decompression limit. So the maximum allowable time, I'm allowed to stay at that depth. Okay. Gray shaded area, I must do a safety stop, as we just learned from the rules. Inside each box is a number, and that is our time that I'm going to be spending at that depth. So, if I'm diving to 23 meters for 20 minutes, I go along the top until I find 23 minute meters. There is none, so I use the greater one, which is 25. I want to stay there for 20 minutes. There's 19 and 21, so I use 21. If I look to the left or to the right, it shows that I'm in pressure group K. So that is how I calculate my first dive. Very simple and straightforward. My first dive, 18 meters, <coughs> sorry, 23 meters for 20 minutes, 25 for 20, 21, I'm in pressure group K. The next one is our surface interval table. So from the time I come up from my dive to the time I go back into the water, my body eliminates nitrogen. And this table here calculates that. I've got the alphabet up here as well down the bottom, and in each box I have a number. I was in pressure group K. So let's assume I spent one hour at the surface before my next dive. Pressure group K, move along until I find one hour. In this case, 55 minutes and an hour 16. Move down and I find pressure group C. So what I've done now is I've eliminated nitrogen from K down to C in that hour that I spent at the surface. All right? So even in your exams, I strongly recommend that you guys draw up your questions. All right? And the way I draw them up, is by using a dive profile. So what I've done so far is, this is the surface up here, this is going down. So I decided to go to 23 meters, so this is depth, and I decided to stay there 20 minutes, 
and this is time. Then I go back up. I decided to spend one hour at the surface before descending back down to my next dive. So 23 meters for 20 minutes, 25 meters for 21 minutes, I'm in pressure group K. One hour at the surface, 55 minutes to an hour 16, that's where I fall in, I'm in pressure group C. Now, I want to do my next dive. All right, for my next dive, what I need to do is I need to use table three. <clears throat> right. Table three, I have the alphabet across the top, I have the depths along the left hand side, and in each square again I have a number. All right. So, my second dive for the day. How deep am I allowed to go on my second dive? Well, I don't want to go any deeper than my previous dive, which was 23 meters. So let's say I want to go to 18 meters. Okay. And let's say I want to stay there or I stayed there for 35 minutes. What's my pressure group after that? Okay, so what I do is I look where 18 and C come together. And where 18 and C come together, I've got two numbers, 15 and 41. What do those numbers mean? The bottom number in blue is my actual uh, sorry, is my, is my um, adjusted no decompression limit. That means the maximum allowable time I'm allowed to stay at 18 meters with C amount of nitrogen in my body. Okay. When I wanted to go on my first dive, if I wanted to go 18 meters, I would be allowed to stay for 56 minutes. But because I have C amount of nitrogen in my body, on this dive, I'm only allowed to go to 41 minutes. Okay. What's interesting to note here too is that if I add 15 and 41 together, that is 56, which is the same as my maximum allowable time I'm allowed to stay at 18 meters if this was my first dive. But it's not my first dive, I have C amount of nitrogen in my body, I'm only allowed to stay 41 minutes. Okay. In this example, I'm staying 35 minutes, I'm allowed to stay 41 minutes, so that is okay. So what I want to find out after this dive, how much nitrogen do I have in my body? Well, I'm going to have C amount of nitrogen in my body, which is what I still have, plus 35 minutes. I can't add C and 35 together, that's adding apples and oranges. So what I need to do is I need to know how many, what's the equivalent? What is C equivalent in minutes at 18 meters? And that's what this top number is. The top number is C expressed in minutes at 18 meters. So if I do this dive to 18 meters, it's, it's, it is as if I had been there for 15 minutes already. So, I find what we call the rat. My residual nitrogen time plus my actual bottom time equals my total bottom time. This is the rat. My residual nitrogen time is 15. This one here. My actual bottom time is 35. This one here. Total bottom time, therefore, is 50. 
So even though I only spend 35 minutes on the water, because I start with C amount of nitrogen, it's as if I had spent 50 minutes on the water. Then we go back to table one. We go 18 meters for 50 minutes. 18 meters for 50 minutes, 51. Puts me in pressure group T. I'm also in a gray shaded area, so I must do a safety stop for three minutes and five meters, and it puts me in pressure group T. Okay. Table one, very simple and straightforward. Table two, very simple and straightforward. Most people have problems with table three. Alright. Is that clear? Yeah? Cool. Alright. Let us have a look at a different example. Let us have a look at finding the minimum surface interval. So, why would I want to do that? I need to be somewhere. Time. I need to be somewhere. I want to do two dives this morning, but I need to meet mum at 3 o'clock this afternoon because she's cooking dinner and she wants me home. Alright? So, draw it up. Let's say I want to go to 25 meters and I want to spend 20 minutes there. And my next dive to 18 meters. And I want to spend 20 minutes there. Okay. What is the shortest amount of time I need to spend at the surface in order to be able to do this dive? So, I'm starting off on table one. 25 meters for 20 minutes puts me in pressure group K. 25 for 21 K. Normally I would continue on table 2, but this is actually where my answer lies, so I can't go there. I need to go to table 3. I know I want to go to 18 meters, alright? And I know I want to spend 20 minutes down there. The bottom number of each one of these boxes tells me that my actual bottom time should not exceed this number. It's my adjusted time that I'm allowed to stay under water. So all I need to do is go where 18 is and follow along until I find the time I want to spend down there for 20 minutes. Bad example. Let's say I want to spend 40 minutes there. Alright? I have a look at 18 meters, follow along until I find 40 minutes. Here we go. I need to be in pressure group D. The example before where I was going to stay there for 20 minutes. Alright? If I find along 18 meters for 20 minutes, puts me in N. N is greater than K, therefore I could have done this dive straight away. But I want to stay there for 40 minutes. So 18 meters, 40 minutes, D. So I know I can have no more than D amount of nitrogen in my body before I do this dive. Now I can go back to table 2 and find where K and D come together. And I see that that is 46 minutes to 54 minutes. So the minimum surface interval on that dive is 46 minutes. Another way to work that out. Yeah. Do the uh, residual nitrogen time at K. Add the bottom time, which gives you the total bottom time, and you go back to that to K and run along to that time, and it'll give you the D. Yeah. 
Yeah, you'll, have, you'll have to show me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd suggest do it like this. I actually, <laughs> saw, actually, there is my yeah. that way because I saw a, um, um, a video on it, a YouTube okay. video on it. Yeah. It was a UX one. Okay. Alright, so that's how I find depending on the surface and dual top. Okay. Um, and, and that's pretty much it as far as, as um, working out the table is concerned. In your, in your exams, there will be things like I want to do multiple dives over multiple days. Okay, first dive to this step for this time, then this step to this time, and this step to this time. Alright, um, tell me how long it will take me to do all those dives, including service intervals and safety stops, if required. So in those cases, what you would have to do is you would have to add them all up. Right. Your dive time, your surface interval, your safety stops. Right. There might be that you end up in pressure group W or X where you have to do a safety stop for at least an hour or two. Right. So those are all different scenarios. Any questions on that?